Welcome to this Debaco University video. Here I'm going to go over uh, tips and tricks to help you avoid potential issues with aeroponic cannabis cloning. All right, if you've tried an aeroponic cloner and didn't have great success, uh, you may have fallen into one of these issues. If you are looking at starting with aeroponic cloning, hopefully this will help you avoid potential issues early on. So starting with some of the common issues, well, for us is pH imbalance. Many times growers, they have something that's too acidic or too basic, and not realize it. So this is why it's always important to have a good monitor system. Also want to make sure your temperature is in the acceptable range. If it's not, that's going to cause potentially your roots to burn if it's too hot or not really form at any great rate if it's too cold. Also, nutrient levels tend to be more on the excessive side with what I see some growers. Uh, everyone has their own kind of uh, gauge or idea. I would first start with any solutions you're adding to definitely follow the manufacturer's recommendations or even go less. Do not go more. So what's the problem solver and how can you avoid these issues? Well, I use the Blue Labs Guardian monitor here. It provides live readings of the parts per million. It could be EC or TDS, whatever you choose. The temperature could be in Fahrenheit or Celsius, as well as the pH. So this is a great the way to look at three main uh, factors, environmental factors for cloning to help ensure all of them are within your preset acceptable target ranges. Now, items a grower must have on hand, and again, there's many things growers should have on hand, but these are some of the very basics. Uh, the most basic would be a pH and up, up and a pH down solution to ensure you're able to keep that pH within your target range. Also, standard lotus blend of nutrients can be an ed a great addition. Uh, again, you don't need a ton of different nutrients. Uh, just clone X clone solution really can work. Sometimes even just plain water. There's everything set up ahead of time, pH-wise, temperature-wise. Uh, that can also be effective. But adding little nutrients can help increase your odds of success. Now there are some advanced options, so depending on what level uh, you want to get into. Uh, while there's no substitute for basically checking your plants, there are some additional options that can help reduce the time from when something goes wrong to when you know about it. You could set in certain alarms or alerts, get text messages, get uh, automatic emails sent out to people. Um, and not only would you be aware of it, there's even options where you can get automatic dosing, where if the computer realizes the pH is coming up too high, you can add particular solutions to help bring that pH back down to your acceptable range to avoid large swings in potential um, environmental conditions that would reduce your rooting success. Now, as I said, there's monitors with alerts, and there's many different ones. You can alert. You want to conditions uh, outside of the program acceptable range that you have uh, set. can also be sent immediately to you so you're aware live as it happens. Uh, so you can be right there and hopefully offer um, a correction point with the minimal duration of time. This can also allow you to correct the issue with minimal time stress on the plants. And again, the whole goal here is to maximize your rooting. Now there's also, as I mentioned, there's automatic dosing uh, solutions here where for high-end operations, the ranges can be set and monitor can be connected to an automatic dose injector where it can kind of uh, work automatically. Where the environmental condition becomes out of the acceptable range, the computer can automatically correct it with little or no input from the grower once it, the conditions are set up by the grower. This is a hands-free approach and is ideal for large-scale operations. Now we're looking here at some callus formation. So the formation of callus can be an indication that something is not quite right. An initial small callus may uh, be followed quickly by the root formation. So don't think immediately when you see callus, something's going wrong. But if you're getting an increase in the size of the callus without roots, that can be an indication. Uh, with large callus, grower needs to check the environmental conditions the plants are in to hopefully ensure that the pH, nutrients, uh, and temperature are all in the correct ranges. And I provided you with just an indication of the ranges that I use. Lastly, uh, you want to be thinking about the um, length that you have for the stem for rooting. Some growers cut them a little too short, try to get away with too small of a cutting. So in this additional video, I'm going to walk you through a comparison of uh, different stem lengths to give you the idea of what the proper stem length should be to ensure you have the best success with your clones. So if we look at our cannabis clones here, we'll notice that this one has a very turgid leaf, very upright, very how it should, how it should look. Nice kind of turgid leaf right there. This one looks a little more flaccid, a little more kind of wilty kind of look to it. 
So what's the possible reason for the difference between these two? Well, if you look closely, they were both harvested at the same time. They're both in the same area. So it makes it a little perplexing, some growers find, how, how can one can look so good and another one can kind of look kind of on that more wilty-like look. So let's investigate this a little bit further. If we kind of zoom out here just a little bit, and we look at the turgid leaf, let's start with, with this one first. We look at that clone, oh, we got a little water spray in. So if we look at this clone, we can notice the amount of area that was left below. So if I kind of work this one out, put that there, go. Look at the area that was left below, we can see that there is definitely a significant portion of rooting area um, there for this clone. Look at the wilty one. If we compare that one <coughs> right next to it, we can clearly see that there is a difference between those two. So if we kind of go up and look a little bit here, So here we're looking at the difference between these two, the rooting area on the more turgid one here, definitely much larger area here located right below. Compared to the one that is definitely more flaccid and more wilty, we can clearly see that this one has a much less area to root in. And that's what's causing the kind of flaccid-like look to the leaves here. Compared to the one that is definitely more turgid, we can see those leaves able to support themselves horizontally. So we clearly see this plant has an adequate area down here for rooting. This is why these leaves are a lot more turgid, able to support itself. So it hasn't rooted yet, but definitely looks much better overall. In comparison, when we look at this plant, we can see how much more flaccid it is. Uh, leaves much more droopy, and that's simply because the rooting area here is much more limiting. So there's not much area to absorb water to maintain the hydration in this plant. Now, it may root end up just fine, but right now looking a little bit more droopy than the one we saw previously. A lot more flaccid to this one, simply because of the limited rooting area here and ability to absorb water.